So this is quite a shocker. Um, uh, so the hidden role of facial recognition tech in many arrests. Get this. So this is from March 2022. The technology is spreading fast among police and often wrong. I feel like that word should say wrongly. They say that twice in here. I've got to take issue with it. And often wrongly. That that sounds grammatically incorrect, but I'm going to move on. I can I can get over that. But people charged with crimes are rarely told an algorithm came into play. So, in April 2018, Bronx public defender Caitlin Jackson, Jackson even, was assigned to represent a man accused of stealing a pair of socks from a TJ Maxx store. Or if you're in the UK, it's a TK Maxx store. Why would they just change the initial? I don't understand. Hmm. The man said he couldn't have stolen the socks because at the time he was at hospital about three quarters of a mile away where his son was born about an hour later. Jackson couldn't understand how police had identified and arrested her client months after the theft. She called the Bronx District Attorney's Office and a prosecutor told her that police had identified her client from a security camera photo using facial recognition. A, 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 a security guard at the store, the only witness to the theft, later told an investigator from her office that police... I've got to move. I can't sit still when I do it. I don't know how I do it on the computer because I really genuinely cannot sit still. So I'm in the car, as you may be able to tell from that noise. That's a gate. Um... Right. Um, a security guard at the store, the only witness to the theft, later told an investigator from her office that police had sent him a mugshot of her client and asked in a text message, is this the guy? Jackson called that tactic as suggestive as you can get. Jackson questions... Jackson's question, sorry, led a judge to order a hearing to determine whether the identification process had been unduly suggestive. Shortly afterward, well, that's, I suppose that's like a lineup, having a lineup and just having one person. Is it him? <laughs> Shortly afterward, Jackson. Jackson says prosecutors offered her client a deal, plead guilty to petty larceny in exchange for a sentence of time served. The client, who'd been in jail for roughly six months, agreed. I would have liked to go forward and go to hearings and go to trial because I think he, he very likely would have been acquitted. But sitting in jail waiting for that just did not make sense for him. So he ultimately took a misdemeanor plea, plea deal. It's just shocking the number of people that end up taking plea deals because otherwise they're going to be screwed every which way. Just to get out of jail, Jackson says, he just wants to get on with his life. The prosecutor who told Jackson how her client had been identified was a the prosecutor told Jackson how her client had been un, identified was unusual across most of the US neither police nor prosecutors are required to disclose when facial recognition is used to identify a criminal suspect they're not required to disclose it i why, why wouldn't they be required to like Surely you're supposed to know. See, this is what I don't get with this genealogy. Gene I keep saying genealogy. It's because it's spelled like that. And I've noticed it recently and now I can't stop pronouncing it like that. 
Um, extra information, <laughs> as usual. Um, I don't understand why the IgG, the investigative genetic genealogy, <clears throat> Um, I don't understand why they're saying because it was a tip, it's not. But it's not like it was a tip that didn't lead anywhere. So, for example, if a person um, identified somebody as, you know, if there was a witness identification, then that person would probably go to court and say that they identified them. So I don't understand why they wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, the, um, I don't understand why they wouldn't reveal it, because if they reveal that person, then why can't they, I, I, I know they're saying it's privacy, but they really don't give a shit about privacy, when we, what, from what we've heard, um, in court the last, over the last 24 hours. I mean, it doesn't sound like they really care about people's privacy at all. So that's just a load of baloney. <coughs> um, I'll continue on. Defence attorney says that puts... D- Defence attorneys, I can't read today, say that puts them at a disadvantage. They can't challenge potential problems with fa- facial recognition technology if they don't know it was used. It was used because it hasn't been tested enough. And I think this is the article which, which um, says something really shocking in it. Besides what you've heard so far, it also raises questions of equity since studies have shown that facial recognition systems are more likely to misidentify people who are not white men, including people with dark skin, women and young people. And it doesn't specify what young people, what it means by young people, but I actually think, because I've read something else about it, and I actually think it means, by young people, they they basically mean people who don't have lines on their face, because obviously lines distinguish you quite a bit like, you know, the sort of shape of the lines on your face. But if you don't have lines on your face, it's harder for the facial, you know, it's it's harder for it to do a good job. So potentially, I think Brian Koberg's got a few more lines on his face now. He looks a lot older, to be honest. Actually, he didn't today in in court when he was sat down. I thought he looked like a little boy. Um, Um... uh, facial recognition technology use shouldn't be a secret. You see, this is what I'm thinking. Um, this is really commonly used a lot and it's not being disclosed. And um, so I've mentioned it in another video. They, the, There's something called parallel construction where basically they make the investigation look like it was something different than it was something that's um acceptable something that's been used commonly like um genetic genealogy has been used um rather than admit that it's something that could get thrown out of court that's that could get rejected because um facial recognition has not been tested um that much well it hasn't been tested enough basically yeah it hasn't been rigorously tested so I'm just carrying on from the same video had to have a little break there a little brain break because it was a my grey matter was going to mush (coughs) ahem ahem right Uh, but where am I Okay, we're right here. Facial recognition technology use shouldn't be secret, yeah, as he says. It's such a big issue in criminal cases. Attorneys shouldn't be left to have these epiphany moments. Misidentification is historically a huge factor in sending innocent people to prison. 
The Innocence Project found that more than two thirds of people exonerated through DNA evidence had been misidentified by witnesses. Imagine if the reason that they have Dylan there, right? Imagine that Dylan was never there, right? Which I I just find it hard to believe that somebody did actually just come into that room if if it was the killer that she encountered. Well, but why would they choose him? Oh, God, I, I could go down a right rabbit hole with this. Um, OK, here's my rabbit hole, for what it's worth. Here's my... Um, conspiracy theory for what it's worth let's say that for some reason because it can't be just to do with covid um the no it must facial recognition oh god i'm going to argue myself now it was so uh, let's say the facial recognition was from um a photograph of him driving round, right? Okay. But we don't know if he actually drove to the crime scene and committed the crime. We just know, we do know that he was driving round and it's likely that he was caught by a camera, right? Well, let's say he was caught by a camera and so then they've got this picture of him and then they show it this facial, a uh, facial recognition picture. I don't know, I understand how that works on, on, um, I don't, I actually, I don't understand how it works. <laughs> but what I was going to say, regardless of whether this is to do with facial recognition or not, is let's say they, they had um, a picture of him on um, from a still photo from a, a camera and then they show it to Dylan and they say, is that the guy that you saw? But let's imagine that she wasn't there at all. But they have to have her be in there. That's why she's got to give this um, statement that she was... But then she's identifying somebody who was wearing a mask from a picture of somebody who's not wearing a mask unless she's identifying somebody in a mask in the car from somebody in the mask in the house, which would be even more ridiculous. I don't know if it would be more or or equally ridiculous. But... um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to carry on. That's that, that's um, a, a conspiracy theory. But, but also, the other thing is that I think it's a possibility that, because they needed his DNA, right, to test against... Oh, no, I've got too many theories going on in my head. I can't share them all. The, the, I'll, I'll just get all of us confused. So I'm going to carry on reading. Uh, If you'd like to hear my theories, please say so in the comments and I'll share them in a future video. But um, I've I've been, um, I've been moaned at for waffling and I just can't not waffle. And actually, I probably waffle more if somebody moans about me waffling, because it will send me into full on, full waffle, um, because it will get me a little bit (coughs) het up. So, um, I don't know why people listen to you, though. If Why would somebody listen to your channel if they, if they, they just, they just send, they just write a little whinge on the way out, I suppose. But, like, it's just like, just go somewhere else. There's loads of flipping channels. Right, anyway, I'm going to stop whinging. Misidentification is historically a huge factor in sending innocent people to prison. I've read this, haven't I? The Innocence Project found that more than two-thirds of people exonerated through DNA evidence had been misidentified by witnesses, making it the leading factor in these convictions. Eyewitnesses can struggle to identify people they don't know. This is what I was saying. I was saying it in this other video, which I don't think it actually succeeded in creating today, but I was trying to create so many different videos and it was all going a bit sideways um but what i was saying is that when i first got into this um case right and it's and it it was only it wasn't that long ago it was like maybe two months ago now um initially i saw um inan harsh 
been interviewed a few times and I and I almost could I thought oh my god is that Brian Koberger and I guess it's just because they've got dark hair dark eyes actually I'm not sure if Koberger, some photos Koberger's eyes look blue which is surprising but dark hair dark eyes um longish face and prominent nose and you know you have your basic makeup of somebody's features kind of thing and but he's he was wearing glasses obviously um in and I wonder if he started wearing those more often and got a bit of facial hair could have grown that as well but um I'll stop with my conspiracy theories um so um but that's interesting really because now I would not at all you know, there would be no chance I'd get them confused. Uh, uh, but when you only first meet somebody or only first see somebody, you're just sort of seeing... I mean, you don't even always remember what someone looks like, but if you do, you're likely to just remember their specific features. So somebody else who's got the same sort of features, you could easily get them confused. So... Um, you just need a, a sort of longish faced man with dark hair, a prominent nose, sort of, um, I don't know how to, uh, set back eyes kind of thing he's got, hasn't he? And, and I wouldn't say he's got um, bushy eyebrows, but I think because his eyes are set back, it might make his eyes look, eyebrows, it might look like his eyebrows are like that. But who, who identifies somebody by a pair of bushy eyebrows like that? Yeah, I mean, would that, that person would have to be bald or something. Or she's actually hinting at somebody in particular. That's the other thing that I've thought. She's actually kind of telling us who it is. And so we need to look at people around her that have bushy eyebrows. There's, there's another possibility. But I'm full of theories, so... Um, right, let's move on from here. Eyewitnesses can struggle to identify people that they haven't, you know, they don't know, just like I said. So, yeah, com completely. I had this from, I said this in my other video, when I was a supply teacher. Like, I would just go to schools, the same as a substitute teacher. I'd just go to schools for one day, like. And so it's so easy to get two kids muddled up that, that look similar, like two blonde-haired boys, similar height, similar build, blue eyes, and some kids you just get muddled up and keep calling them by each other's names and that's because you've only just met them but then you, you get to know them there's absolutely no way you get get them confused um so continuing on the rules regulating facial recognition use are gaining importance as more police agencies adopt the technology in 2016, the Georgetown Centre on Privacy and Technology said police in most US states had access to the tech and that photos of about half of US adults were in a facial recognition database. Your face could be in a facial recognition database. You've got a 50-50 chance. The report also warned that the technology would disproportionately hurt black people because of the technology's higher error rate for people with darker skin. In a 2019 report, the Georgetown Centre said New York police had made more than 2,800 arrests following face recognition searches between 2011 and 2017. Last year, BuzzFeed's news supported, oh, sorry, reported that law enforcement agencies in 49 states and more than 20 federal agencies had at least tested facial recognition technology products from Clearview AI. And Idaho is one of the states, oh, oh no, it was one of the, I think it was one of the, so it says 49 states now, but I think Idaho, there was a few states that were the first states. And Idaho was one of the first states that was involved with Clearview AI. Idaho and um, Moscow University is really like 
techno forward advanced technologically they've got a robotics department and everything and everything but um yeah i'm wondering how drones have come into this as well because um uh brett payne is a drones expert um a handful of u.s police departments including in new york city and detroit have since adopt oops adopted policies governing the use of facial recognition. The New York and Detroit policies require two people to review the results of a facial recognition scan before the results are turned over to detectives and say facial recognition alone cannot be used as probable cause to carry out a search warrant or arrest. Same as they said with the um, genetic genealogy, that can't be used as probable cause. The New York policy took effect in March 2020. The latest versions version requires prosecutors to tell defendants when facial recognition is used to identify them, but defence attorneys say that they suspect police are not always adhering to the policy. Oh my goodness, how could you doubt them? The NYPD says it's on its website that the department knows of no cases of false arrest based on the use of facial recognition in an investigation, but the department did not respond to questions about specific cases. Jackson, the public defender, says police often obscure their use of facial recognition programmes by crediting a witness with identifying a suspect. But the witness may have been shown photos generated by a facial recognition programme. The use of facial recognition programmes gets papered over by these human identifications that only could be made with the use of facial recognition, she says. Facial recognition searches that lead to criminal charges most commonly begin with an image, often from security cameras. Yeah. That, that photo is run through a system that compares the image to those in a large database, 50% of the US population, like a collection of mugshots or driver's license photos. Why do you think they're pulling over so many people? Florida's system includes more than 13 million mugshots and 25 million driver's license photos. A human analyst reviews the search results and picks out possible matches which are given to investigators. The search results can include hundreds of photos with confidence scores for each potential match. Investigators show potential matches to an eyewitness or police officer and if they make a positive identification, they can typically testify at trial without ever mentioning facial recognition. Facial recognition technology is improving, but it's still flawed. Error rates have fallen 90% since the National Institution. But you think how many people could have been put away because of it, due to it, and all these error rates are falling, but what were they before? The National Institute for Standards and Technology began testing systems in 2018, says Patrick Grother of NIST's image group that evaluates fingerprint iris and facial recognition software. The algorithms are better at analysing low quality images. That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, this is the bit. And recognising ageing faces. So that's why I think young people might actually be you know, not just kids, basically, not just youth. Uh, da, 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 da. So that's weird, isn't it? They're better at analysing low quality images and recognising ageing faces. And some have made progress 
in recognising faces from the side. Nevertheless, Grother says, there's a considerable spectrum of accuracy and image quality remains an issue. NIST's most recent test, which, rely, which largely relies on a database of high quality mugshot photos, found that even the best algorithms can be wrong more than 20% of the time. Another problem, there are few rules governing, this is the bit I can't believe, the images police submit to facial recognition systems. In 2017, New York police believed that a, a theft suspect looked like Woody Harrelson, so they used a photo of the actor as a probe photo, then arrested the 10th person who appeared in a facial recognition sh recognition search. Elsewhere, police have submitted artist sketches of a suspect to facial recognition systems. Can you actually believe that? How, are we just going back in time? That's that's like we're going. That's that's like going backwards. Just because it's, you're putting it onto technology, doesn't make it more accurate. Fighting facial recognition in court, substances such as DNA found at crime scenes are treated as evidence in criminal investigations, but attorneys and tech policy analysts say they've not seen the facial recognition scan used as evidence at a trial. Still, the technology may have helped identify a suspect. And that's the important thing, isn't it? Identifying somebody in the first place. You're in it then. Um... Without the suspects or their legal team having been informed, this has prompted defence attorneys to hunt for hints that the technology was used and to devise strategies to force disclosure. Jackson, the public defender, has created a guide for the National Association of Criminal Defence Lawyers. She advises attorneys to ask what made detectives suspicious of their client. OK, so this is what. Anne Taylor's asking right now. If the basis of suspicion is unclear and if photos or videos are listed as evidence, which we don't know, and their client is identified by a stranger, well, we, well, arguably, he is identified by a stranger. <laughs> Jackson, um, Jackson says lawyers should suspect suspect the use of facial recognition. Jackson advises lawyers to request supporting materials for an investigation, including a list of all of the candidates returned by a facial recognition system and the confidence scores assigned to them. OK, I'm going to put this into the um, <clears throat> description so that you can read the rest if you would like to. Um, yeah, so this is something that is being used and not being... It's being commonly used and not being disclosed. And 50% of the US population are in a facial recognition database. How about that? Unbelievable.